hello. Now, just to be like, there are a lot of videos uh, on YouTube about Cine EI mode, and I just got the Sony FX30. Just want to bring a little bit of light into this manner. I may not be the best to explain it, but I think I get a very good grip on it. And uh, it's just sometimes unusual for me to see how other people are struggling with this concept, which is nothing new. It has been used before. And uh, now it is implemented by uh, the Sony cameras as well for a quite few time. I mean, Sony FS7, which is five, six, seven years old, has it anyway. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a very high dynamic range, just to be in tone with the topic of the discussion. <laughs> But what happens is, when we are talking about exposure, there are three big elements. So we, we have the ISO aperture and shutter speed. In video world, we can talk also about ND filter, which is nothing but a dark piece of glass that will reduce the amount of light that will hit the sensor, so you can use wide open apertures in bright conditions. Aperture is the opening in the lens, the bigger the opening, the more light will come and hit the sensor. Now, to confuse you even further, a bigger opening will have a very small number. For example, an aperture of f1.8 is much bigger than an f16. That's what it is. This is what you have to accept. Shutter speed is the amount of time that the shutter will let will be open so that it will let the light hit the sensor. And we don't mess around with that. You should be shooting 25 frames per second. Shutter speed will be 1 over 50. You don't usually change the shutter speed to alter the exposure, though you can in digital, it's just not a very elegant way to do, it, way to do it, because it will affect the overall, I would say, sharpness of, of the uh, image as well. So uh, if you keep on changing the shutter to alter the exposure, some of the scenes will have more blur than others, so that will look very jarring. And the ISO, the third element, is nothing but the sensitivity of your camera sensor. This is something that depends on the gamma curve that you are using and varies from camera manufacturer to camera manufacturer. And it's something that is established by the engineer. You cannot alter that. Now, to confuse it even further, when you buy a camera from the shop, it will offer you a variety of ISO values, which if you change, will make the image darker or brighter. So, because you paid the camera and that option is there, somebody will ask themselves, like, why can I change the ISO? Because if you change the ISO, you're going to alter the dynamic range of that particular gamma curve. For example, in Sony cameras, in Sony S-Log3, uh, theoretically, you can capture 15 stops of light. Let's put it like this. Six above middle gray and nine below middle gray. But in order to do this, your gamma curve needs to be, S log gamma curve needs to be set at the base ISO. For the Sony uh, FX30, the base ISO, one of the bases ISO, because it has two, but that will confuse you even further. So the first base ISO is 800. What means that if you set your camera to ISO 800, this is where you can capture those 15 stops of light. Six above middle gray and nine below middle gray. But the problem is, a camera that does not have a Cine EI mode, like for example, Sony A7S III, Sony A7 IV, uh, maybe Sony A1, the new Sony A7R5, it will still offer you a plethora of various other ISO options, like ISO 200, 400, 1600, 20,000, and the moment you change those values, the image will become brighter and darker. So you'll be thinking, but why, why wouldn't I use them? Because, look, I can make my image brighter or I can make the image darker so I can control the exposure like this. Like, why, why would I purchase an ND filter, which is a piece of glass that is expensive, it may break, when I can control the exposure with the ISO? Because you're not going to get the same dynamic range. That's all. You, you're going to, to eat into the highlights and shadows in an unknown uh, manner and you're going to introduce noise so the camera won't perform as its best unless you use it at the base ISO. Now what is amazing about Cine EI and what separates this uh, compared to other 
log mode that Sony camera offers is that by using various other ISO values that to confuse you even further Sony named them exposure indexes you're going to maintain the same amount of dynamic range but you are now just going to, sh to shift the ratio between highlights and, and, and shadows to your liking so instead of capturing six stops above middle gray and nine stops below you can capture eight stops above middle gray but then you'll be capturing only seven below or you can go even and capture 11 stops below middle gray but that is going to leave you only with four stops above middle gray but this is something that you cannot achieve with a sony camera unless you have the cine ei uh, mode enabled all right practically speaking <laughs> the moment you are using an exposure index that is lower than your base iso you're going to favor the shadows because you have to apply the same amount of light back on the sensor by either opening the aperture reducing the end filtration or simply blasting your scene with more light the reverse is is also valid for the highlights when the moment you're going to use an exposure index that is higher than the base iso then means you have to step down the aperture or increase the level of, of uh, filter, any filtration or subtract the light which is very unusual but an s lock gamma curve likes a lot of light so with the cine ei though you can recover a lot of highlights so instead of having six uh, stops of light above middle gray you can go up to eight but because you're going to eat into the shadows your final result will look very noisy though the, sh though the highlights will be exposed correctly and you will be uh, capturing plenty of details but the shadows will be so noisy that it will render the final image in my opinion almost unusable so the only logical way to use cine ei is to see more into the shadows because as I said a low gamma curve loves a lot of light and in order to do this you have to lower the exposure index to use an exposure index that is lower than the base ISO which will obviously force you to open up the aperture or to uh, reduce the end filtration or to add more light into the scene so this so the shadows now will be less noisier the image will look less clearer but you're going to have less dynamic range in the highlights which if you're not very careful again may give your uh, video uh, like a camcorder look so unfortunately what is in in the in the theory in the practice i noticed that you can recover successfully one stop of uh, shadows and one stop of highlights everything above that especially with uh, the sony fx30 is i would say unusable maybe you can in some scenarios you can uh, have two extra stops of shadows but then you have to be very careful because you're going to capture only four extra stops of uh, highlights above middle gray so there's not very much now turning our attention to the computer what will happen is uh, is I have these three images one two and three and those are taken into my kitchen so this is basically the first image that is nothing but uh, an s log gamma curve s log 3 that is shot at the base uh, ISO of 800 there is no exposure offset applied and using common sense I have rendered the a wall behind it the wall this wall here I have rendered it middle gray so to make things very scientific I have applied this um, plugin called false colors that will show us exactly at, at any time what IRE we have for 
every tone uh, in, in this particular image. So as you can see, the mole here is exposed as at 41 IRE, uh, as it should. But if you look here into the, uh, those chairs, the shadows that are rendered in these particular chairs are almost at between 5 and 10 IRE. So this is black with almost no details. When you see purple, this is an alert, because purple means that you are essentially capturing shadows or black with no details. You don't want that. As you can see, highlights here that are rendered yellow are at the verge of sleeping. Now, if we move on to the next clip, the next clip is basically shot with the Cine EI with an exposure offset of 400, which made me open up the aperture with one stop. So, if we put again the, if you are using again the false color uh, map, we can clearly see how much shadows we have recovered. So, if in the previous image, the back of the chairs was almost rendered completely blue, in the second image with the offset set to two, uh, 400, look how much shadows we have recovered. And as you can see now in the highlights, unfortunately, we are starting to have even more uh, yellow, almost on the verge of clipping highlights. So that again shows that you, you gain one stop in the shadows, but you lose one in the highlights. Now in the third image, I have used this time a, an exposure index of 200, which made me open the aperture with another stop. And again, if we are going to apply the false color code, look at the back of those chairs. They are actually rendered almost at the level of mid gray. So look how much shadow uh, details we have recovered, but the highlights are even much more, even more reduced on the verge of clipping. But if you're going to, to play this video and we're going, or not play, if we're going to, to, to blow up the image at 300, Yes, there is some noise here into the uh, shadows, but compared to, to the first clip, the noise level, as you can see at 300 or 500, is, is significantly uh, worse than when we are using an exposure index of 200, which will force us open the aperture with two stops. So I would say that, turning back to the camera, I would say that Cine EI is definitely usable in recovering shadows in log rather than recovering highlights. I did the, the same experiment for the highlights and again if we turn our attention here into an image of my garden this is just a bright scene where the green foliage is exposed to middle grey there are some highlights and we have if we, if we are using the false color code we have almost no uh, shadow script. Now, the moment we are trying to recover highlights and we are using an exposure index of 1600 and we are applying the false color code, you can see how much is now eating into the shadows. So compared to the previous image where the vast majority of tones were middle gray, now we have black with almost no details. And if we're going to go further, and we're going to try to recover another stop of light. So we have eight stops of light above middle gray recovered. Look now how the shadows are, are looking. Almost all of them are black with no details. And if we're going to play this clip in full screen, we can see how ugly the noise is in the shadows. And I can also show it by magnifying at 200, 300, uh, percent and we can see how ugly the uh, the noise is into the shadows when we are recovering highlights through this method so unfortunately especially for this camera for the fx30 the cine ei mode works but works best when you try to recover shadows and if you try to recover the highlights it will do exactly what it says on the team but the amount of noise that you get will made will render the image, I would say, almost unusable.
Now, I'm not sure what's the story with the Sony FX3, FX6 or FX9, which have the same Cine EI mode, but they have a much larger sensor and much larger pixels, so probably the image quality would be better. But for my model, the FX30, uh, I would say that is not ideal to use as, uh, an exposure uh, offset higher than the uh, base ISO, and just to use this mode to recover one stop realistically, two stop optimistically of shadows, without adding supplementary light, of course. That's all.